Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Let me start off by just thanking Alan for having me out for this, uh, this event tonight. Definitely appreciate uh, this opportunity to speak before all of you. My name is Grace Clement. You might be looking at me and think that I was actually somebody's child in here, but I'm actually not. I'm uh, graduated from Robert Central High School in the 90s. I am a product of this area. I've been out here all my life, except for when I was younger, uh, from Robbins, Illinois, originally. Uh, moved out here when I was about seven years old, my, my mother, and uh, we've been out here ever since. Uh, at this point, I'm running for a 227 Board of Education. I heard all the different comments that were made about the Board of Education today, and I was really excited to kind of chime in and kind of give my take on everything. But I, I tempered myself and I listened and I tried to hear about what everybody was saying. Let me just start off by just giving you a little bit of background about myself. As I said, I was from, I'm from uh, Robbins, Illinois. If you know anything about Robbins, Illinois, it's not one of the best places to be. Um, it's very deprived of all kind of economic, economic opportunities. Um, it's just uh, the school system is very poor. Um, and the, the people there are even as poor as their school system. My mother uh, was a single mother. Uh, she had me and my, my brother, younger brother. He's uh, seven years my younger. And uh, she raised us by herself. Uh, my father was incarcerated for practically uh, most of my life. Uh, and so I never grew up with my father. So I think when I see kids, when I have a, I have a special place in my heart where I might hear about kids and stories about people who do not have a, a father in their lives. Uh, my mother. Uh, worked very hard to make sure me and my brother had some opportunities that she didn't get nor my father got. She worked two jobs. Uh, one started, she was working at Pearl Vision off of uh, Halstead, over in the uh, Glenwood area. She worked there from 9 to 5, and then she would come home and she would check my homework, and then she would go to her next job. She would rest a little bit, make sure so we had something to eat, and then she would go to her next job from 11 to 7 in Wheeling at a post office. She worked there, repeated the cycle over and over again every day to make sure me and my brother, when we moved out this way, that we were able to be out this way. So I have another special place for single mothers in my heart. I think they are you know, just tremendous, 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 uh, had tremendous responsi responsibilities. And I, I just, I get goosebumps thinking about that. From that point, um, when I got into high school out here, I went to Rich Central. And from that point, I went to uh, the Marine Corps after I got. Now, I didn't go straight to the Marine Corps. I went away to college for the very first year uh, when I got out of high school. Went down to Southern Illinois. And being a, a young man who, who, had, who hadn't had uh, much uh, outside interaction because my mother was very protective of me, my brother. I got away for one year, and uh, I lost my mind. <laughs> So yeah, the Illinois told me, right. yeah, young man, you're not ready for this All game right. yet, and sent me back home. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I, I worked, uh, I did this overnight job at uh, Walmart. And I went into Walmart, and I'm working this overnight job with these people who are in their 40s, 50s, and they just look like life just kicked them in the face. I mean, they just look like they missed out on their opportunities, and they just look downtrodden, beaten down by life. And I said, this is not what I want. This is not what I want for myself. This is not what my mother would want for me. So I made a choice and I went to the Marine Corps. I did uh, four years in the Marine Corps, came back, and uh, got into school. I got into uh, Prairie State College. Now, when I was in high school, Prairie State College was not the thing to do. You know, Prairie State College is just not a cool place to be after high school. You want to go away to all the big universities where all your friends are going to be. But for me, when I came back, especially after having the what I had went through earlier, it kind of made sense. I, I really buckled down and I made the best of my opportunities there. Got involved with a lot of different programs that were at Perry State College. I was on uh, president of the Black Student Union. I was president of the Student Government Association. I was student trustee at one time at, at uh, Perry State College. I, I ran all kind of different just clubs and activities. And I, I mean, really, I just got involved in Perry State College like I had not even thought I would be involved even in high school level. From that point on, I met some really great people. The first person I met was State Rep. Robin Kelly. And uh, State Rep. Robin Kelly has been just a tremendous mentor to me. Uh, she's just taught me uh, 
just by this example, just uh, how to be a good person, just a genuine good person. I mean, I'm not sure how many of you have met her, but she's just a really great lady, and, uh, and she just has a really good heart. And I think that's the biggest thing I took from her. From that, um, I went down to U of I in Springfield, and I was able to shadow her uh, down at, at the uh, Capitol when she was a state representative for the 38th District. And uh, that was just a tremendous, uh, tremendous opportunity because I got the chance to meet people like Bill Davis and some of the individuals that you see in this room right now. And uh, I think that's where it kind of took off for me that I, this is something that I wanted to do. I wanted to be able to give back in a magnitude where I was working in the political field. So that's where my whole niche for trying to do things like this came from. When I came back from college, though, uh, I started working at Brace State College. That was my first, first, uh, first real job. And uh, I was the coordinator of student service learning there and uh, uh, at Community Involvement. And I also taught an English class there. It was a developmental English class. And it was two things that I pulled from my year working at Prairie State College. One was that the students were not being challenged. They weren't being motivated uh, in the same sense that I was when I went to school. Their motivation consisted of just being able to get to class. That was their motivation. If they could make it to class at, on time, they felt like they did a big accomplishment for them. They felt like that this, you know, that we owe them, you know, they sh we should look at them and say, hey, well, at least you made it to class on time. You know, that was their big thing. When you, you put out projects like a service project, say, hey, we're going to uh, work at the South Suburban Pads for the evening. That was a challenge, trying to get them to come out and do something that's good for their communities. Uh, clothing drives, food pantry, all these different ideas and suggestions that you would give to them was like pulling teeth. And that was something that, when I went to college, at Price State College, it, it, you know, that was something that was just a you know, a no-brainer. This is something I wanted to do. So I felt like, in that sense, they weren't being engaged to do stuff in the minute. Bless you. The next thing, when I worked in the English class, I, I learned was that their reading and writing was core. I mean, it was it was tremendously like it was beyond reproach. It was just awful. Think of these sentences, punctuation errors. Reading was very slow, and it just seemed like it was not uh, at a level for a college student. And when I would ask them, so what high school did you go to? They would say, I went to Rich Central, or I went to Rich East, I went to Bloom, I went to, surprisingly, I went to Homewood Flossmoor. Some of them would tell you where they came from, and you just, I would think to myself, well, when I graduated back in the, you know, the 90s, Rich Central, Rich South, Rich East, home of Boston were blue ribbon schools. So what has happened in the last 10 years that now we have these kids coming out unable to read at an eighth grade level? And, and that made me start giving, asking questions and, and looking into things. And what I saw was that it wasn't a funding issue. Uh, as you have all alluded to, we pay very high taxes out here, extremely high taxes. And if you look at how much of your tax base goes to the schools, this is over 50% goes to the schools. So these kids are getting enough money you know, per pupil to, to be at the school. It's the lack of accountability of what happens to those dollars after it gets there. Is those dollars being directed to programs that are competitive with other high schools in the area? Marion Catholic doesn't do anything that's just Extraordinary. They don't have a different wand that they wave over the kids and these kids just magically learn. They have a fundamental set of values and specific goals that they have labeled out that they do and they actually are able to put their kids into a successful college and make them success out coming out of high school. So when I, when I started really researching everything, it, it kind of led me and drove me to want to to uh, be a part of the board and try to instill some change upon the board. And uh, I guess that's where I'm coming to you now, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking for your help. Uh, April 7th is the election day, and I don't know how many of you live in the 227 district, but the 227 district is Richmond Park, Madison, Olympia Fields, Park Forest, the small section of uh, Chicago Heights, which is the Beacon Hill area, and Country Club Hills, which is a small section of that area, too. How many of you actually live in that area? 
Okay, great, great. So that is the area that uh, that I'm running for, and that's the the, uh, the position that I'm I'm looking to get into. Um, I just will leave you with this, and this is something that I I, I actually picked up from my grandfather, and it's about change. I know, like with the Barack Obama. Uh, in fact, every change is kind of almost like a stale word to use right now, but I think it's, it really, really hits home with everything that's going on right now. So my grandfather told me that when he took my grandmother out on his very first date with her, they went to this restaurant that's out in Blue Island. Uh, I don't know if any of you are familiar with it. It's called the Maple Tree. Yep. And back in the day, the Maple Tree used to be like a really nice spot to go to. And uh, it still is a pretty nice spot to go to. Well, when he was there, he said that uh, there was a tank there. They had uh, lobsters in the tank. And inside the tanks, there was this one lobster that had, just looked like it was uh, disease ridden. It just had like all kind of spots and the skin was showing the whole nine. And uh, he, he was looking at it really peculiar. He said, well, what's wrong with this lobster? So he asked the, the, the person at the front, he said, what's wrong with this lobster here? Why is this lobster in the, in the tank with all these other lobsters? He said, oh, no, everything's okay with this lobster. It's just molten. It, it took off its shell, so it's, it's, it's okay. So he's like, well, why would he take off its shell? He said, if the lobster doesn't take off its shell, it will suffocate and kill itself within its shell. So it has to break its shell in order to get, you know, to grow, to expand itself. What I, I, when I say that, and I, I thought about that, that's where we're at right now here in the South Suburbs. We have, and especially with our school system, we've been doing the same thing over and over again. We, we think that it's the same teaching methods that we need to instill for our kids that we were brought up in. But it's a different game. It's just as you talked about with the technology, things have changed. And I think that that's what we need for our South Suburbs, and that's what we need for 227. So April 7th, please. <laughs>